Has everybody got their stuff? Like, they just pass out to the board. I guess Bruce got him too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. Um, so I am going to call to order the <coughs> Joint Board of Ethics meeting. This is April, Thursday, April 19, 2018, at the City Hall. And um, the first order of business, um, we passed for people who weren't here. Uh, most of these item agendas were on, not all of them, but most of them were on the um, agenda for the last meeting. But we didn't have the very important member from Fairfield, Mr. Stone, who is thankfully here today and thrilled to see you, honestly. And anyway, so we passed on pretty much everything that was on the agenda for the, the reason I'm mentioning this is that the board is required under the ordinance to elect the chair and vice chair every year annually, and we do it at the first meeting, but we did not do it at the first meeting this year because Mr. Stone wasn't here and it's an important item. So anyway, um, the, board, uh, the uh, meeting is now open to um, nominations for election of the chair position for 2018. Are there any nominations? Madam Chair, I would like to nominate Christy Bradford to be chair. Thank you for that. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Madam President, or Madam Chairman, I move that acclamation that the uh, uh, nomination cease. Okay. A second? Second motion. All in favor? Yeah. And I will abstain. Um, okay, thank you very much. And at this time, we need to do election of the vice chair position. Do we have a nomination for the vice chair? I'm nominating uh, Brad Medkay for vice chair. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? Not moving nomination cease. Okay. Case uh, one's up. Brad uh, Medkay. Okay, do we have a second for that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please not for the record that I would abstain from that. Okay. Thank you for serving, Brad. Thank you, you do. Okay. All right. The uh, next matter on the agenda is to review the minutes from our last meeting in 2017, which was November 2nd. And we'll address that first before we address the minutes from the meeting last month. Madam Chairman, if it is in order, I would make a motion that the minutes from November 2nd, 2017 be approved as written. Do I have? I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Okay. okay. It's a unanimous vote. Okay. And then we also have our minutes from March 27th to 2018 that need to be reviewed. I've already reviewed those so myself, so. But if anybody needs to look at that. <coughs> Madam Chair, I'd make a motion that the minutes from March the 27th, 2018 be approved as written. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Um, the next matter of, uh, on the agenda are the expenses of an income for 2017 <coughs> under Section 21 of the ordinance, under Section 21A. Um, the expenses. <coughs> have to be divided between Nelson County, Bardstown, and Fairfield. Um, by Nelson County um, is required to pay 75.38% of the um, expenses. Bardstown, 23.58%, and Fairfield, 1.04%. Of course, the city advances the expenses, so we don't actually have to pay. We just ask for reimbursement from the county and for uh, Fairfield. Um, those are, uh, Mary, can you go over those expenses? A little bit. We had. It looks like we just had um, forty cents in income. Hmm. Yes, we had one open records <coughs> request uh, okay. in twenty seventeen, um, and so we had forty cents. That was four pages that we did. And so um, the expenses incurred were all standard items. Um, the non-compliance letters that I send out at the beginning of the year, which are required to be sent by certified mail, right? Which is why that's expensive. Um, and there's always, uh, you know, a dozen or so that um, you, you, I chase down a little bit. And then, of course, get prepared for the upcoming mailing that goes out in September. Um, I, as a courtesy, send reminder letters to people in December uh, because the goal is to gain compliance with everyone. So I uh, do that. And um, so that's just copies and postage. So okay. that, that is the year. 
Snapshot. <coughs> I have run the calculations and these numbers appear right to me, but I am not a CPA. <laughs> I'm not, I, would, I check everything 50 times because my numbers are not always right the first time, but I, these came out right to me. The Excel spreadsheet has a formula okay. built into it, so, and I um, calculated them three times myself as well. No, 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 right. So it looks like we need to. They're right. <laughs> they're right. We need to request um, $194.66 from the county and a whopping $2.69 from Fairfield. Um, John, do you have any questions about the amounts owed by Fairfield? Send by a note. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we. Um, send out a letter to the county requesting $194.66 in reimbursement to the city and $2.69 from Fairfield. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor? No. Austin, are you in favor of that? Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. So we will take care of that. Thank you very much for that. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda are the 2017 filing statement of financial interest um i have been over all of the filings myself and of course we don't unless there's some reason to do so I, all i look at is we always just look at is the um whether people have filed timely it's required to be filed by uh, close of business december 31st of the close of year and as usual we had people who had forgotten to do it or just over looked at or thought they didn't have to file and that's so common that they think because they didn't serve the whole year um we have received several requests for extensions the people who have requested those extensions have all filed since they requested those extensions and in the past the board has routinely again our goal is to get people to comply to file their statements of financial interest and so um anyway do we where's the okay yeah oh, that's okay oh, that's this last year. Year. yeah that's last year. so did you there get you this out okay Everyone so the board one. has okay a copy and uh the people who are in yellow um yellow highlights have requested the extensions for to file late and they have all filed late um i would unless there's a question about it or any discussion necessary that you guys look at this i'd like to make a motion that we grant the request for extension and the late filings Second. okay any discussion okay all in favor uh, all right. okay. Now we'll know there are, we do have three people that we have not been able to get the letters to. We send out, as required by the ordinance, a certified mail return receipt requested um, notice that they have not filed timely and request that they, they have 60 days from the date of their receipt to file. There are three people we have not been able to actually get actual notice to. Um, but as of the last couple of weeks, we're, and we've tried multiple times, but we think we have good addresses now, as of this week, for these final three people. So I'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting to let you guys know if we've been able to get actual notice. But they will have 60 days from the date they get that actual notice. So, you know, hopefully they'll comply before that. But anyway, I don't have any question about those. I think that, that that will be taken care of. Does anybody have any questions about that on the board? Okay, and and none of those people are currently serving any anywhere. They're not on, currently on any board or agency for the city or county. Okay. Okay. Um, at this time, we are going to reopen <coughs> the preliminary inquiry regarding complaint number twenty eighteen dash oh one. Um, we previously held the preliminary inquiry on March 27, 2018, but even though we had a quorum and we could have, could have, um, we could have uh, had a vote at that time or at least made a decision 
in closed session or in out of session. We chose not to do that without a full board um, because Mr. Stone was not here. Since that time, Mr. Stone has had an ability, thanks to Mr. Brooks taking a videotape, thank you very much, um, to actually view the videotape of the preliminary inquiry. And at this time, we're opening, continuing, I should say, the preliminary inquiry only for the purpose to see if the board has any clarification questions. Mr. Mathis already had his opportunity to present what he wanted to present at the inquiry, and I don't think it would be appropriate to let him continue that. Um, but, I, but as I mentioned at the last meeting, we were going to continue it for the sole purpose <coughs> that if the board members had any questions for clarification only, we can't ask any substantive questions because this is only the inquiry stage and not an actual hearing. Um, Brad, do you have any questions no. for clarification? No. Austin? No. John? Okay. No. Okay. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we go into closed session pursuant to KRS 61.810 sub 1 sub F, discussions or hearings that might lead to the discipline of an individual employee, general nature of the business to be discussed, potential ethics violation of the standards of conduct clause. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. So at this time, we will. All right. Good to see you. Um, all right, uh, we are now back in open session. Um, I'd like to formally um, make a note that no formal action was taken during closed session regarding complaint number 2018-01. Um, just for clarification purposes, under section, okay, under section 24 regarding the filing and investigation of complaints, um, any complaint that meets the um, minimal or meets the requirements of the board to actually constitute a proper complaint. Um, we have to hold uh, within 30 days a preliminary inquiry which we are concluding today. Um, at this time under 24D the board after following a preliminary inquiry under section 24D the board is required to make a determination based on the inquiry uh, number one whether the complaint is within its jurisdiction and if that requirement is met number two to conclude whether the complaint alleges a minimal factual basis to constitute a violation of this ordinance do i have any motions from the board madam chairman pursuant to ordinance 150.120-2 subsection 24d I would move that complaint number 2018-01 is within our jurisdiction but does not meet the minimum factual basis for a violation and that this hearing be terminated. Not hearing, inquiry. Inquiry. I'm yes. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay, do we have any discussion by the board? All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Let the record reflect that it was a unanimous decision. It, um, after the board meeting, we uh, were required to, uh, we are at this time terminating the inquiry under 24D, and we will reduce this conclusion to writing and transmit a copy of our decision to the complainant, Mr. Terzop, and to uh, Mr. Mathis. Okay. So we are formally done with. Complaint number 2018-01. Okay, and um, so that negates the requirement under since the preliminary inquiry has been terminated, uh, there will be no hearing set, and this matter is concluded. Um, at this time, we're moving on to subsection G, which is our request for an advisory opinion number. Oops, the number missing my hand. 2018-001. It says 018, it's supposed to be 2018. And um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion that the board go into closed session pursuant to KRS 61.810 sub 1 sub F, 
for discussions or hearings that might lead to the discipline of an individual employee, general nature of the business to be discussed, potential ethics violation of the standards of conduct clause. And this is relating only to the advisory opinion request that we have received, um, which is a separate matter for Not Nope, we're done with the preliminary inquiry. We've terminated it. Okay. So. I'd like to thank everybody on the board. Um, personally, it's you probably had a thankless job. I can identify because I'm on planning and zoning and board of adjustments. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming, guys. And the Joint Board of Ethics is back in open meeting. Um, let the record reflect that no formal action was taken regarding a request for an advisory opinion number 018-001. And I want to clarify that um, I thought that the advisory opinion request had been numbered incorrectly, but I was wrong and Mary was right as usual. And it, uh, it, to be consistent with um, <coughs> advisory opinions we have previously rendered, uh, the numbering is number 018-001 for this advisory opinion request. Okay, under section 29 of the ordinance, um, section 29A um, reads as follows. The Board of Ethics may render advisory opinions concerning matters under its jurisdiction based upon real or hypothetical facts and circumstances upon its own initiative and <coughs> shall render an advisory opinion when requested by any officer or employee of the city county or a city county agency who is covered by this ordinance. Um, what this means, of course, is that if an advisory opinion is not requested by an officer or employee of the city county or a city county agency who is covered by the ordinance, the board has um, discretion to choose to issue an advisory opinion or to not issue an advisory opinion. The Advisory opinion request number 018-001 was not requested by any officer or employee of the city county or a city county agency who was covered by the ordinance. Therefore, it is within the discretion of this board to choose to render an opinion or not to. Do I have any motions one way or the other on this issue? Madam Chairman, I would move that we do not issue an advisory opinion on request 018-001. Do I have a second? No second. Do I have any discussion on this matter? All in favor? Oh, yeah. Aye. Okay. Let the record reflect that it was a unanimous vote. So there, we will not be issuing an advisory opinion on 018-001. Um, so that concludes the um, substantive portion of our meeting. At this time, um, I'm not, I mean, I'm okay with it going ahead and setting a next meeting date, but uh, because we have not gotten actual notice to the three people who have not filed yet, I mean, at this time, I really don't have anything for an agenda item and, unless they request an extension or something else comes up in the meantime. You should just wait until then. I would just yeah. wait, and especially, I mean, it's. Seems wise. I mean, I, it, we, we use taxpayer dollars and take time from Mary, who's the city clerk, for no apparent reason. I, I don't think that's a good decision. <laughs> you know. So at this time, why I, I would suggest we not do a meeting day present, and we'll just I'll just contact you guys if we have something coming. Motion to adjourn. Need a second. Second. All in favor? Okay. okay. All right, this meeting is concluded. All right. And
the board's just, we're not going to take any formal action. We just have to do some clerical work that has nothing to do. Okay. See you later. <coughs> All right.